you're in Australia and you're looking for hospitality work, labouring work, or business admin type work, then chances are you've seen or heard about an app called Sidekicker. But is it any good? Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Andy and I've been using Sidekicker on and off for a few years now. So I'm going to explain to you what it is, how it works, what sort of work you can expect to find on there, and how much you can expect to get paid for that work to help you decide if it's worth signing up. So firstly, what is Sidekicker? In my opinion, Sidekicker is an app which replaces the need for a temping agency. So basically it connects employers with potential employees, um, casual employees mainly. So employers can post a job on there, be it laboring, warehousing, hospitality, data entry, and then it, employees looking for work can go through and whichever ones take their fancy, they can apply for, it's very quick. And then usually you hear back whether you've got this shift um, yeah, quite quickly. So two, how it works. Now I signed up a few years ago and back then it was just uh, an induction day. So you go in there, um, you watch some health and safety videos, you, you have a brief one-on-one -on -one chat um, just to talk about what sort of things you've done before and what sort of work you're looking for. For those of you that are intimidated by interviews and everything like that, I wouldn't worry. It was very informal and I don't remember it being particularly stressful at all. And then the good thing is that is probably the last interview you'll ever have to do for the app because most of the jobs posted on there, um, you just apply and literally from that, they will approve you or not approve you for the job. So you won't have to do an interview again. Occasionally, there's ones on there that are longer term um, positions. They might run for all three months. Then they might phone you up, have a chat or possibly even then call you in for an interview. But I'd say at least 90% of them, no more interviews, which is something that I personally love about it. One thing I will say is that when you first sign up, you might have to do a few more of the unpopular jobs just to build up the rating in your profile. Because if you're applying for um, a position which has lots of people applying for it, they're probably going to look at your profile, see that you've not actually worked before for anyone on Sidekicker. So there's no sort of uh, history on there. And they're probably going to go for someone with a better history. So yeah, you might have to do a couple of the unpopular jobs first. And by unpopular, I just mean it might be like a bad start time. It might be like an early start or a late start. Or maybe the money will be slightly less um, than the other positions. But you won't have to do too many of them to build up your profile at all. And then so going on from that, when you do um, get approved for a job, go there, actually do a good job. Because not only will you hopefully be getting a five-star review from that, but um, also the next time that that employer posts a job, if they see that you've worked for them before and you did a pretty decent job, more than likely they're going to book you again. So it's all sounding great so far, right? Well, it depends what you're looking for. So what sort of work gets listed on Sidekicker? Um, like I said, it's mainly, mainly laboring, event laboring, warehousing, hospitality, uh, a little bit of manufacturing work like factory type stuff. There is a sprinkling of admin slash data entry type things on there. Um, that's the positions that I sort of mainly go for. But to be honest, if that is what you're looking for, then I wouldn't solely rely on Sidekicker. You can get it on there, but I wouldn't solely rely on Sidekicker because more often than not, you're not going to be doing any work in a week. Whereas the other stuff, yeah, you can, you can pick up a fair bit each week. So because of that, my work history is going to look a little bit different to the average one, but yeah, I'll show you it now. So here you can see I did one day, this was setting up furniture at an exhibition. Um, I then did six weeks scanning architecture plans. This was a weird one to be fair. So it was uh, basically eight hours a day just feeding bits of paper through a scanner. But the manager was in another state and it was just me and this other guy in a room talking nonsense all day really. So it wasn't too bad and yeah, it was just... Needed the, needed the cash at the time. Um, then I did two days setting up stuff for a wedding and then packing it down again. You get quite a bit of that, especially in the summer. And that, that's actually quite quite fun, those type of jobs. Um, it's usually quite, quite an informal setting in a small team. And then I did 43 weeks of data entry for a tech firm. This was during lockdown. Um, I have to stress though, like I said before, this is quite unusual. It is possible, but if this is what you're looking for, I'd definitely try the more traditional routes of applying for jobs. So like your regular temping agencies and things like that. Um, after that, uh, there was a bit, obviously some gap. And then I did two days driving a van around, replacing batteries on those e-scooters that you can rent. They're, they're pretty new in Melbourne. That was like just after launch. That was, uh, uh, it, it was interesting <laughs> anyway. But yeah, so that's the type of stuff that you can, um, you can find on there. Again, 
I don't think this is the typical mix of work that people do on the app. Um, I just wanted to give you an example of my experience. And like I say, it, my experience definitely skews towards uh, the business support type roles, which most people's way. Okay, and fourth, what sort of money can you expect on there? It's a, it's a bad average for the type of work. So I had a quick look and um, I can see there is some that start at like $28, I think. Average is around 30 to 32. There's the odd thing that's 40 on there. Um, that might be like Sundays or a funny time or whatever. Again, it's supply and demand. If they, if they think they are, they're going to struggle to find people for an awkward shift, they, they might pay a bit more. Or they're just really keen to get decent people apply, so they might post a bit more. So yeah, so 28 to 40, but the average is about low 30s. There is one on there at the moment I saw that's 42 an hour, but you have to speak English and Vietnamese. I can barely speak one of those, so uh, obviously I'm not suitable for that, but maybe you are. And just before I get into the pros and cons of Sidekicker, I would love it if you could like this, if you're finding it useful so far. And if you like these sort of videos about earning a bit of money on the side or getting a side hustle going, then be sure to hit subscribe because there'll be plenty more like this on the way. Okay, so the pros and the biggest pro, in my personal opinion, is, as I mentioned before, the fact that you don't need to do any further interviews or reference checks after your initial induction. Secondly, and this is the this is obviously a big one for most people, is flexibility. So literally, if, if you're a student or if you don't know uh, what days you're available from week to week, then this app's going to be great for you because you can literally choose, oh, I'm free that day, I'll apply for that. I'm not free that day. I'm not free for a week, won't apply for anything this week. Oh, you've got the next week completely free, right, bang, 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 apply for as many as you can. So yeah, flexibility around times and days of the week is a big pro. And of course, another pro is that you don't have to deal with recruitment agents. No, I'm just kidding. Some of my best mates are recruitment agents. And on to the cons and probably the biggest one, and this is like uh, inverse of one of the pros being flexibility. Obviously, the other side of that is the lack of security. So it is casual. If you're sick, tough. Um, if you can't get work every week, tough. You know, you're not guaranteed um, hours every week or anything like that. So yeah, if you if you want more security, then it's it's better to go and get an actual sort of not permanent job, but one where it's with definitely more consistency. This is this is gig economy essentially for most of the jobs on there. And then the other con is that occasionally I find that there's a bit of a shortage of work on there in my area for the type that I'm looking for. Um, I, I see that generally sort of south of Melbourne, there seems to be way more jobs. So if you're south of Melbourne, you're laughing, but I'm sort of in a northwest. And generally looking for sort of admin business support type roles, and there can be a bit of a shortage um, for that type of work. Um, it, I think I guess it's cyclical, so different times of the year, there's going to be different types of work on there. Like in the summer, there's plenty of wedding work and event work and all those sort of fun things. And in conclusion, if you haven't guessed yet, I actually like Sidekicker. I think it's I think it's worth signing up for. Um, if you're looking for permanent work, it Although it is on there, it definitely wouldn't be my first port of call. But if you're looking for casual work, like if you're a student or you, you're looking for extra money on the side, like you just want to do the odd shift at a weekend to supplement your day job, then it, it, I think this app will be great for you. I'm self-employed and there are times when I have more time than money and that's where Sidekicker sort of fills that hole for me. If you're keen, I'll chuck a link to Sidekicker in the comments and if you sign up through that, we'll both get a little bonus. But if you wanted to sign up through the normal way, that's also fine. And make sure you check out my other videos. Uh, they're similar to this. So if you like this video, I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. And until next time, be healthy, be wealthy, be wise. See you next time.